Hey guys, welcome back to Cynic Syndicate. I'm Jack. I'm Gray. And today we are going to be talking about The Last of Us Part 2. So, unless you live under a rock, if you're a gamer, you've definitely heard of the controversy surrounding Naughty Dog's upcoming sequel to 2013's The Last of Us, The Last of Us Part 2. But in case you haven't, this is your official spoiler warning because we will be talking about the leaks here as minimally as we can, but in so far as we need to, in order to talk about some of the problems that we have with the reaction to the game. People are infuriated with these leaks, and from where we're sitting, usually for the wrong reasons. Some people are genuinely concerned with the plot and what seemed to be a lack of respect paid to beloved characters, and we'll get to those near the end, because some of that makes sense to us. Um, but most of the reaction has been more like this. Was full of wokeness, social justice, political correctness, and downright garbage writing. The Last of Us 2 is a complete and utter disaster. Yeah, pretty much. People are up in a frenzy about the representation of LGBT characters in this game. Notions of anti-Christian elements in the story and, and just a general atmosphere of social justice propaganda present in the game. This is all substantiated, of course, by, well, a couple of leaked hours of gameplay footage and a sketchy plot summation written in really poor English. And so the war of media rages on, and here's the problem we have with that. These reactions are, well, they're reactionary. They, they take the minimal information that we have about the game and jump to the conclusion that the entire work is a piece of propaganda, that is woke, anti-men, anti-straight, anti-cis, even anti-Christian. They make these assumptions because they're angry, they're hateful, they're afraid, not because they've actually experienced the art, and games which are told in a masterful narrative like the first one, our art. They don't know these things enough to understand the overall quality of the story. They claim to care about the story quality and the respect of the lore and the characters, and yet many of these people have no more criticism to give than to bash the sexuality or gender orientation of some of the game's characters, as if that has anything to do with the quality of the story at all. A story may be negatively affected by the presence of such elements if it is intrinsically inhibited by them. Think about the, uh, the Canto Bite section of The Last Jedi, which hurt the narrative by stealing screen time from the more important sections. But simply having characters who express less common identity traits does not inherently worsen any story. Would this story be any better or worse, for example, if Ellie were straight, or if Abby, the new antagonist, weren't trans? We say no, it, it wouldn't, as long as one keeps an open mind and stymies his bigoted reactions to harmless identity traits. You can't just write off a whole story based on lesbians being in the game unless they somehow hinder the game's greatness by being lesbian. And so far, we have no clear indication that the story will be built around the identities of these characters to its own detriment, merely that they have these identities. Now, to put our opinion into perspective, we wanted to show you what the other side is saying to showcase some of the ridiculousness of the reaction to The Last of Us Part Two for trivial reasons based on discrimination. We'll be reviewing a video made by YouTuber Mr. Obvious, whose content does a great job of summarizing that perspective and taking apart the best bits. Enjoy. I'm going to warn you right now, these spoilers basically show you that the game is not worth buying. These spoilers definitely don't warrant not purchasing the game in and of themselves if you're concerned about the quality of the game, because the overall quality of the game, as of yet, is indeterminable, since we haven't even gotten our hands on it. For those who are disappointed by the leaks of story details, it's true that the spoilers are going to ruin certain surprising aspects of the game. And it's a shame. But we haven't had the full experience of the game yet, nor can we ascertain the overall quality of its story, characters, or thematic message without playing it and knowing the overall context. But unfortunately, Mr. Obvious doesn't actually seem to be concerned so much with the quality of the story, uh, so much as he is with the presence of LGBT characters and other minority demographics in the game, as we're about to see. There's a lot of things I have criticism with. You know, ever since I heard that Ellie being a lesbian was shoehorned into the story by some sort of crazy feminist writer in one of the DLCs, I, I knew this would happen. I knew that The Last of Us 2 would be an absolute disaster. Okay, Ellie being gay was in no way shoehorned into the plot of the Left Behind DLC that came with The Last of Us. It made perfect sense and it fit pretty well into the story. It never felt forced, which makes me think that Mr. Obvious either hasn't actually played the DLC or he needs to replay it. Ellie being gay had zero effect whatsoever on the quality of that storyline, unless, for some reason, you just didn't like that she's gay, which is clearly what's going on here. So in one of the scenes, Ellie confronts Joel and says, When we left the Fireflies, you told me 
that they had said there were dozens of others. So they retconned the past a little bit. They made it to where Joel directly lied to Ellie and told her that the Fireflies had other immune people and that he's basically just lying to her. He's acting completely out of character. You know, he looks older and, and you just, it just doesn't feel the same. It feels like a completely different character, to be honest. I think it's really key here that Mr. Obvious doesn't even seem to remember key aspects of the first Last of Us, which really goes a long way in showing that his reaction here is coming from a place of vitriol against perceived SJW elements of the sequel, rather than from a genuine love of the franchise. If Joel is lying to Ellie about other people being immune to the virus in the second game, then that isn't a retcon. That's exactly what happened at the end of the first game. Turns out there's a whole lot more like you, Ellie. People that are immune. It's dozens, actually. I ain't done him a damn bit of good, neither. To say that Joel is out of character from continuing to lie is ridiculous. Did he forget that the whole point of the end of the first game was to shock players through Joel's lie? To demonstrate that his love of Ellie as a father figure came before his desire to save the human race, even though it sacrificed her autonomy. As I recall, that was the big philosophical question the game left us with. That was the big point. Did Joel do the right thing? Either way, he did lie, so this talk about retconning is just ignorant. And also, how does Joel looking older make him feel less authentic as a character? Because I'm pretty sure five years have passed in the story since the first game, and I'm also pretty sure that people, including Joel, do in fact uh, age. Second leaked video that hit the web is Pure Degeneracy, which shows Ellie and Dinah, her Jewish girlfriend, attempting to get straight to scissoring before others walk in on them. Okay, there's actually not too much to say about this one, to be honest. Uh, I have no clue exactly why this is degenerate, quote unquote. Um, if in The Last of Us 1, there had been a scene where Joel and Tess tried to quickly have intercourse before anyone walked in, you wouldn't blink twice. Yet suddenly, once it's two girls, it's just inappropriate degeneracy. Also, notice how Dina is not just Ellie's girlfriend to Mr. Obvious, but her Jewish girlfriend. Just wait until you hear what he has to say about that. Now, I always thought it was really weird that not only was Ellie lesbian out of nowhere, that all of a sudden she had like a Jewish girlfriend. Jewish people are only 2% of the population. I get the very strong feeling that one of the developers or writers for Naughty Dog, well, I think they had their own agendas. This is just ridiculous. I, he's mad that Ellie's girlfriend is Jewish. His logic for this? That Jews are rare beasts, apparently. Uh, scarce to be encountered in nature because of their relatively small population size as a group. Well, assuming that Jewish people don't have some drastically lower survival rate during the apocalypse than other people do, you would still expect to see about 2%, quote unquote, of the population being Jewish. So it's not weird if you encounter a Jew in real life, right? Do you flap your hands around and go, wait, wait a minute, where the fuck did you come from? You're, you're too rare, this can't be real. No, of course you don't. And I don't see any difference in this scenario. There's nothing wrong or strange about Dinah being Jewish. And unfortunately, you know, demonizing lesbians isn't below a lot of people's standards, and obviously not Mr. Obvious. But when you see anti-Semitism like that, that's just shocking, because you'd, you'd think that as a culture you've moved past this kind of bigotry, and you'd just, you'd be dead wrong. In The Last of Us 1, I never saw a single indication that Ellie was gay. Not once. Not once did it ever seem like that in the entire, in the entire game. As far as I knew, she was an innocent, regular girl. And I chose to save her, thinking she would have children who happened to be immune to the fungus infection. Firstly, while The Last of Us 1's campaign uh, may have never given clear indication that Ellie is a lesbian, that's because there was nothing in the campaign that ever called for that. It was a game about taking her to a hospital to get a cure made and fighting zombies and bandits along the way. That's literally it. There was no point in that campaign where it would have made sense for Ellie to just randomly express her sexual desires, whether they be for women or men. Further, there was never any indication that she was straight either. I don't know why Mr. Obvious has this notion that little girls in video games are straight until proven gay. Lastly, I cannot ignore how incredibly offensive it is to suggest that lesbians cannot be innocent, normal girls. This is beyond a disgusting thing to say, and this type of rhetoric can be extremely hurtful to gay children, because it, it suggests that there's something unpure or dirty about them because of a romantic desire that they can't even control. I care in this instance, because Ellie needs to have kids. That is maybe the only way that anyone will become immune. Do they ever explore this? Do they even use it as a plot point? Like, okay, maybe Ellie is uh, interested in other girls, sure. Put that in the story, but also put that 
she knows that her best way to spread her immunity is to have children. Wow. Thank God we have someone like Mr. Obvious who's really concerned with the facts of the matter and the importance of the survival of the human race. Seriously, he treats this game like it's real life. Ellie needs to have kids? What? If Ellie believes Joel's story, that there are other immune survivors, then why would she bother to spread her DNA if she doesn't like men? She doesn't feel that the burden is upon her because of based on the information she's working with, there are other people who can do that job. Joel died. He dies. They kill him off. No respect to his character. They kill him in cold blood. And who is he killed by? Well, wouldn't you know it? He's brutally murdered with a golf club by a female to male trans person. Look, Mr. Obvious, I actually think that we can find a little bit of middle ground here. Uh, I don't necessarily like what they're doing with Joel's death either, but of course it is important to understand that they definitely look a lot worse without context. Um, without having played the game and experienced the full story, we can't truly understand how this plays out and how it will affect us and the rest of the story. It would be a bit uh, like if someone leaked the ending to The Sixth Sense and said, this guy literally follows this little kid around learning about ghosts and shit, and then he's actually just dead the whole time anyway. This, without context, sounds like a dumbass story. However, when you actually watch the film, it's one of the most well-executed and shocking plot twists in all of cinema. Furthermore, Mr. Obvious seems pretty confused about who the character Abby actually is. She is a male to female transgender, not the other way around, as he suggests. This one particular angle that he shows can be deceiving because in all the other promotional photos and videos, Abby has obviously transitioned to a female. Somehow, a trans female to male person overpowers Joel, a grown man who's physically fit and then beats him to death with a golf club in front of Ellie. If Abby did overpower Joel, keep in mind that the man is nearly 60, if not older. I know Mr. Obvious thinks he doesn't age, but he actually does. Uh, so it wouldn't be that hard to believe. But the leaks have also shown that Joel was shot, meaning that he was already wounded before he died, and so weakened. Also, it looks like Abby has a gang of helpers with her. You know, maybe Joel couldn't take them all, and that's how he was beaten. But nothing indicates that Abby alone overpowered and killed Joel, and I seriously doubt that's the case. But again, People like Mr. Obvious are filling in the gaps of what they don't know about the story in order to suit their hateful rhetoric. They're making the game out to be ridiculous when in fact they're working with scant information and just don't know. Never mind Ellie being lesbian. Never mind having a Jewish girlfriend. Uh, again, I don't understand why. And never mind all that. How in the heck, in an apocalypse where people infected by fungus in their brains, eating other people and infecting them, how did they have access to the medical technology for gender reassignment surgery? How did they have access to hormone therapy? The way he starts this point off is what really gets me. Never mind Ellie being lesbian, never mind her having a Jewish girlfriend, which I don't understand why. The, the suggestion that the presence of a lesbian character and a Jewish character somehow automatically lowers the quality of the game because it's not in humanity's interest or because Jews are a small demographic is incredibly homophobic and anti-Semitic. And the fact that he tries to disguise his obvious intolerance as a concern for a human race, which doesn't actually exist in real life, or because Jews are a small part of the human population is frankly laughable. Also, Mr. Obvious, and I don't expect you to remember this because your memory of the first game is pretty shit, but Abby's dad was literally a surgeon at the Firefly Hospital, which had access to high-level medicine and medical technology. It is not unreasonable that Abby, being the daughter of a clearly valuable surgeon during the apocalypse, could have had access to gender reassignment surgery and hormone therapy. Again, he, he tries to disguise transphobia as it's not realistic, as if he's incapable of suspending reality for a minute in a game about the zombie apocalypse. And Dinah reveals she's pregnant. Okay, wow. So apparently Dinah is uh, bisexual? Is, is that it? And then she hooks up with Ellie for no reason? I don't really understand that at all. So if, if Dina or Dino, whoever she is, is bisexual and then she hooks up with Ellie, what's weird about that exactly? Last I checked, being bisexual includes an attraction to women. You know, maybe Dinah wants to be with Ellie because she loves her? Nah, that, that's too far, that's too far. Totally the villains. Ellie was gonna be murdered by the frickin' doctors, but Joel's the bad guy because he's a straight white male. Are you starting to see the, the message here, the woke message? 
Okay, I have literally zero clue where he got the idea that the game's apparent suggestion that Joel is actually the bad guy is because he is a straight white male. What? The, the, the game is doing this because from Abby's perspective, Joel is the bad guy. Think about the story logically for a minute of the first game. Joel rebels against the government, treks across the country, killing hundreds of people in the process, gets Ellie to the hospital to make a cure, then changes his mind, murders all the people in the hospital, Abby's dad included, just out of his desire to keep Ellie alive, basically screwing over all of humanity in the process and depriving the world of its last chance at a cure. Even when Ellie would have probably wanted to die for the cure. When we play as Joel and do this, this behavior is arguably justifiable and you sympathize with his reasoning for doing it. However, it makes perfect sense that others would view Joel as a murderous madman. Straight people bad, uh, men bad, religion bad, but but not, not any religion, right? It's never a criticism of like a Middle Eastern religion or an Asian religion. No, it's always, it's always the Christians. I wonder if there's some sort of agenda there. There's nothing about these leaks indicating that the game is anti-male or anti-straight. Are you trying to say that the presence of characters who are not these things means that the game is against men and heterosexuals by default? No, the, the game has taken no stance on this whatsoever. That'd be like saying that the lack of black characters in the game means that the game is racist against black people. Or saying that the first game is homophobic because the main character, Joel, is straight. This is just a false dichotomy. The options are not either being heterophobic or anti-cis and featuring LGBT characters or just not including them in the game at all. Those are not your only two options. Don't be so closed-minded. And let's be honest, the presence of a Christian cult in the game, which is a very plausible scenario given the breakdown of social order in the world, isn't necessarily anti-Christian either. We don't have enough information yet to assess the game's stance on religion. And you know, to play devil's advocate here, since the, are Christians not by and large homophobic in their theology, wouldn't it make sense for them to have a little bit of a problem with Ellie and her girlfriend for that reason? And Christianity is the largest religion in the United States. Maybe that's why the game doesn't present the cult as Muslim or Jewish or whatever else. What kind of cult are they most likely to encounter in this country? Isn't one of the developers also Jewish? Why wasn't a Jewish person the evil cult? You know, I just have to wonder if there's any bias that's leading this crummy plot. Oh Jesus, guys, there it is. It's those damn Jews controlling everything. Why is this video so anti-Jewish? You can't go more than a few sentences without complaining that, that Dina is Jewish, or that the cult isn't Jewish, or that Jewish developers are trying to insert anti-Christian messages into the game. C can this guy just please admit that he's an anti-Semite? That being said, the same guy who said it's unrealistic for a single Jew to exist in the game is now suggesting that it's anti-Christian because the cult is Christian instead of some other minority religion, such as Judaism? If Dina's very existence as a Jew doesn't make sense to this guy, how the hell could an entire cult of them exist? I will never play the sequel, ever. Not even if it gets ported to, to PC. I'm not gonna play it. I'm not gonna waste my time. So if you never play the game, you'll never know if you're wrong. Why would you close your mind to the possibility that the game is good? Hopefully that isn't the stance of most people who have reacted negatively to these leaks for similar reasons. Play the game. Maybe it's artful, tasteful, maybe it's a hell of a good time. Maybe it's got a great story. Maybe it makes you explore new themes and concepts that make you question your values or beliefs from the previous games. Maybe it's a masterpiece, just like the first game was. If you never play it, you'll never know. And what's worse, you're closing your mind to new ideas. Not buying these games based on leaks and hearsay could very well deprive you of a very joy enjoyable experience. At the end of the day, if you want to cancel your pre-order for The Last of Us Part Two, do it because you want to make the game industry more consumer friendly and to stop paying developers before they rip you off. But, but don't do it because you're like Mr. Obvious or the people like him. Don't do it with hate in your heart. There is nothing in the leaks to suggest that the story will be hindered uh, by the presence of characters with minority sexual or, or gender identities. Unless, of course, that bothers you for some other reason. And if so, you might want to start asking yourself why and really get to the root of it logically. Lastly, we want to address those who may not be upset for those reasons, but because they genuinely think the game just looks like shit that Joel will die in an unfit way, that, that the plot will force you to play as the antagonist rather than as Ellie, and things like that. If that is your take, that's your take to have. 
but we personally are going to play The Last of Us Part Two, even in the face of the leaks. They've negatively affected the impact of the game, sure, that goes without saying, but we don't know the context of the art yet. Maybe Abby will be sympathetic, her actions justified, if we can see her point of view. Just like we came to love Negan, even after he killed a beloved Glenn. Maybe this story of revenge and the cycle of violence will be poignant and relevant in the world we live in today. We have to play it first to understand what its themes are, how its characters will grow, and most importantly, how it makes us feel. Does it move us? Does it challenge us? Does it stir our thoughts and judgments, making us question and redouble our interpretations? Does it do what great art does? The Last of Us 1 did just that. We're going to hold out for The Last of Us Part 2. Hey guys, welcome to the end of the video. If you enjoyed this content, like and subscribe, click the notification bell, leave us a like, a comment, share with your friends, let us know what you thought. And as always, thank you for watching. <laughs>